Appreciate it. Um, I understand I'm fighting with the pizza right now, so I'm going to be super fast. It, you don't have to go 2x if you watch the recording. Uh, so uh, uh, bear with me and uh, just interrupt with questions, okay? I'm, I'm highly interruptible. So I've been playing with Enidin since, Enidin since the last meetup. It was the, kind of the first week uh, in November or so. And I got excited about a few things. I, I've been building software for about 30 years. And uh, I, you know, I, I'm totally uh, disoriented by what's going on. I'm sure most of you are as well. And so I started Future Proof to help small, medium businesses catch up with the madness that's going around us before we hit the singularity. You know what I'm talking about. Um, and so um, this presentation uh, starts with these 1,600 workflows. Fantastic resource. I took a look, downloaded them. If you haven't done this, you can scrape them, analyze them. And uh, I found, this is going to be too small for me to read, I apologize. Um, of these, uh, most of them are HTTP requests and code, but at the bottom you can see no native form nodes. I felt so bad. Out of 1,600 workflow templates, not one person decided to use the form node. It's so sad. <laughs> and so I'm here to tell you I'm going to do something about it. Of course, AI at the top of the, the heap, you know, getting things done, development, and so on. But again, kind of a, a total analysis, forms are not being used. And, and this is both the, uh, the forms, if, if you like data, there's a bit more. Happy to share my slides later. I'm talking, I'm talking about both about the forms that you use uh, that um, you can use to start the workflow and then in the middle and then at the end. I'm also talking about the uh, human in the loop flows, where you, N8N basically meets you where you get your work done. Uh, email, Slack, you know, usual suspects. So uh, none of these are being used in any of the 1600 templates. It's, uh, it's criminal. So, so if, you, if, you, if you zoom in, you'll see here send and wait on all of these. So if you're close enough, you can notice. It's all kind of the same pattern, basically. People getting involved. And so I think N8N uh, and UI, UI in general, user interfaces, should fall in love a little bit more. I'm here to bring that message to you, okay? All right. So uh, now let's get started. Um, I've already mentioned a lot of this stuff here. Uh, so these native forms, nine plus one fields, the usual suspects plus HTML, but you can't, you can't use script. That makes sense. You don't want people maybe injecting something in your hosted N8N instance. And then the human in the loop, they stop and wait, but it's constrained. It's limited what you can do. You know, approve, decline, couple of things. You can kind of tune it. Um, but again, you're limited by the UX. Also kind of nine uh, channels there, email, Slack, WhatsApp, uh, the usual suspects as well. Uh, and so there's some limitations. What about your own applications? How far can we go? I'm excited about building beautiful custom interfaces for your N8N applications. I think it's a good idea. I think we should try it. Uh, business logic and pictures so that you can talk to your stakeholders and make sense of the code without having to open up an IDE and, and play with you know, letters. You can show them a picture of the way the application works. Um, and then change management in minutes. If you're using NHN, you know what I mean. So yes, yes, and yes, please. These are some interfaces that I put together in the last week in preparation for the presentation. You'll forgive me if they're not beautiful in your opinion, but I think it's a good idea. All right? So this part here I'm going to scream through. Uh, if you haven't seen these forms, you basically pick the form, decide if you want to start. You can configure it, fill it out, submit it, and then you get data in your workflow. No surprise. OK? And uh, here, uh, you can pick a form in the middle of your workflow as well. And you configure it. On this particular screen, the 9 plus 1 usual suspects, date, text area, text box, and so on, plus custom HTML. And you can inject your own workflow data into the custom HTML. Makes sense. OK? But, uh, but now in the middle of the flow, you've got this form. You're interacting with it. You've got some data. It's great. You can do things like you know, accept and you know, decline and review and so on. Uh, but what else can you do here? Right? Forms are good. What else is there? There's the human in the loop where we uh, uh, can meet users where they work. Okay? So that's uh, this list here. Uh, so again, if you didn't see it, it's, the, it's this. And then I forgot to add Microsoft Teams. So it's nine. Uh, really. Um, and so in this case, I'm sending after uh, some review or whatever uh, to the user's email. And again, there's that send and wait. Uh, you get an email. If you haven't tried this, you've got buttons, a form, whatever. Uh, you can interact with it and go. Okay? And that's how you pick those and configure them. 
training material over here. What's that? It's an old training uh, material. Uh, it's, it's, it's how I think. Uh, it's been years yeah. like this, yeah. <laughs> and, and so um, a, anyway, it's basically same, same but different. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's same but different for all of this stuff, basically, right? And so um, for these custom interfaces, I'll introduce you to the weight node. The weight node is your friend. Um, and the reason is because you can tell the weight node to respond on a webhook. There's other things. Most people use it for timing, I think. But you can tell it to respond on a webhook. And you can tell it to respond instantly, or you can say wait for a respond to webhook. So you can play with that. Uh, there's the respond to webhook, the kind of cousin of wait, I guess, in this particular story. And so this is going to be hard for you to read as well. So I'll just quickly summarize. Uh, it doesn't matter how you start the workflow. It could be any trigger, any timer, any integration. doesn't make any difference how you start the workflow. What you need is the execution ID. You have to grab that. If you start the workflow with a webhook, you can reply with the execution ID. If you don't, you just put it somewhere, uh, Firebase or you know, whatever, and get it from there. But you need the execution ID because that lets you then discover the structure of the workflow at runtime. And in that structure, you have this last node executed. And that's what tells you where your workflow is. Otherwise, you don't know. So you grab the execution ID. You figure out what your last node is. And then you can either respond immediately, or you can put some work in between the wait and the respond to webhook. I feel like I've lost you. <laughs> OK, let me just show you how it works. There's the last node executed. And here is a video, I think. Yeah. So here, in this video, <laughs> which is small and I can't expand it, um, I have a screen that I've made. And I'm basically starting the workflow. By calling a webhook, you'll see me click. There's the spinner. And then as soon as I continue by clicking the blue button, you'll see the workflow finishes and my UI resolves. And it could be any UI. It doesn't make any difference. As long as you can call a webhook and pick up the execution ID, you can build this into any interface at all, uh, any existing application as well. The second example here, I'm basically putting in some data, uh, some JSON. And then I'll open up the wait node and inspect it. So that's the immediate response if you want to get right back from the workflow. Okay? And then here, I, I hope, here is another one, which is the work in between. So I'm launching the workflow, and I'm waiting. And then I can pick that up and give the user some interface to interact with. Uh, you know, What is it that you're interested in doing today or whatever? They can give me some data. I can process that data and then respond afterwards. There's the green checkbox at the end. So basically, any, any interface, whether or not you're working with immediate response or you want to do a little bit of something and then get back to the user, you can do that. And I see a hand up at the back. I'll just show the last video here with a more sophisticated interface. I know you're not going to be able to read this. But uh, trust me, this is an NADN workflow. There's a bunch of steps in here. There's some you know, AI magic sprinkled in. And then some interface where I'm asking the user, what do you want to learn? How do you like to learn? What topics are you interested in? And so on. This is not the kind of interface that you would expect that N8N as a company would invest in building. It's too specific to a business problem, just like your business problems. And that's why you need to be thinking about these kinds of mechanics inside of your workflow. And it's really just two nodes. Once you get to know them, you can build this stuff all day. With any workflow that's out there, you don't need to do anything special to change the workflow. You just need to put in a wait node wherever you want to get a user interface. And uh, kind of bridge some long-running work with a wait and respond to webhook wherever you want to do something more sophisticated for the user. So uh, it works, uh, and it's fast, and it's easy to understand. OK, let me stop this a little bit early. This video, I mean, not the, not the talk. You're, you're not going to get off that easy. <laughs> and 
show you how it works. So if you're interested in the details, uh, it's just this one screen. Uh, what, what is it? You need the execution ID. You use that against the API to get the definition of the workflow. In that, there's a little bit of detail uh, that you can use to figure out where things are going. You can use the resume URL to pick things back up. But the resume URL doesn't care what node it's waiting on. So if you have many waiting nodes, then you need to uh, uh, show the right UI. Uh, and that's why here, when you pull that back, you get the last node executed. You can map that to a, a UUID, a unique identifier for the node. And then uh, your application will load that interface that you've designed specific for that point in the workflow. OK, so that's, that's, basically, that's basically it. I mean, I'm excited about what this means. I've got a list of cool ideas. I'd love to talk to you about it. That's it. Pizza time. Yeah. A question, question, and question. There's three questions so far. OK? Uh, I, I saw your hand up first, I think. Yeah, sweet. OK. Nice. You had a question. It, sorry, if you ab abort it. Uh, yeah, so let's say I, I'll, I'll take away the, um, uh, the, the formulation, basically. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Then, like, will it, will it continue waiting until it's running anymore? Well, I, I mean, you can, you can stop a workflow. You can, uh, through the N8N yeah. API, you can just uh, add that feature to be able to kind of cancel it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I know that, but uh, what about if we, like, use it uh, for actual uh, customer people and they don't, like, constantly monitor, like, is this, Oh, oh I, I think I understood now. So, so what if they, they just close the window and go away? What happens to the workflow? My understanding is it doesn't consume any resources on the N8N server because of the way wait nodes are structured. I'm not, I'm not an expert, though, but that's what I've I read that somewhere, that they basically dehydrate the workflow and leave it there until you call the webhook. Then it wakes up, hydrates the service, runs again, and things get moving. So it, it's not, it doesn't cost you anything. The icon you see spinning is probably just a GIF. <laughs> I, I think, I mean, any of is here, you can ask them. But it's, I don't think it's a resource problem like that. Yeah. Uh, if you change your workflow, do you also have to change your, your web hooks? Um, yeah, so it depends on how you set it up. Uh, I, I think it's a good idea I'm for, you know, the, the little bit I've been thinking about this is that to use the, the unique identifier that's in the node. That gets created the moment the node hits the canvas. When you add a node, it gets a, a unique identifier. You can copy and paste into your editor and look at it. But, you still have to sync but the minute you do that in another workflow or duplicate the workflow, all that gets regenerated. So if you're using those IDs in your application to load the interface that matches that, it's a problem. If you use the name of the workflow node, it's not a problem. But then you can't rename those. Uh, the ID you can rename. So it's a trade off, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have time for more questions? Just one for one. Uh, okay. Hello. I really like your presentation. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah. And my question is, what happens if you go a step back from the form? You do something and you do a mistake? I have no idea. I've never done that. I don't think you can do that with, with N8N in general. It's a kind of forward only uh, is my understanding. I, I think you can. Oh. I think you can. Yeah. But it's a very limited. The form is very limited. What I play. Mm. What happens when someone starts or do something and wants to go step back? Uh, so I, I think if the, it, I think if the if the business case is you want the user to be able to redo something, then you could probably give them a decision at some point yeah. to redo, yeah. and that and then you would draw that in the workflow. But I don't think there's a way to kind of rewind an executing workflow. I don't know. Maybe there is. <laughs> I, I, heard, I heard it's a good idea. Uh, in fact, I, I had some encouragement uh, from someone tonight, in fact, to do that. So yeah, sure. Uh, but I don't know. What's the template? I mean, it's, a, it's, one, it's one slide. Something more tangible to learn from because, yeah. Ma maybe we can talk about it afterwards. I, I'd love, I, I mean, I'd love the input. I, I know how to build things and, and teach them, but I don't know how to sell them. So okay. if, if anybody <laughs> wants to help me learn how to do that. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's just it, right? So th those were two applications that I vibe coded this week. Uh, one is an express application with just plain JavaScript and HTML. That was the blue and white one. And uh, one was a, a React application that was, got way more complicated than it needed to be, but it, it basically it was just a, re a re you know, Next.js application, a React application. Uh, I thought that um, you were using like the anything form I don't think I don't think you can take them that far. We but had just revealed a couple weeks ago oh. to go to update. It's full custom CSS. You can just add your own styling. Oh, so, nice. yeah, yeah. It's outdated already, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but you would still not be able to do like a drag and drop interface. Right? Yeah, sure, sure. Beyond the standard form, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. How do you decide between a workflow that does a little bit when it scrolls out and then resumes uh -huh. versus two workflows mm -hmm. that you would fire with a webhook? Does the job goes away and then the second one gets started. Uh, you can do this like that and achieve the same goal. Th yeah, there's nothing special yeah. about what I'm doing on the N8N side. It's a wait node that that either responds immediately or responds with a webhook uh, webhook response node. Yeah. That's it. So do you have a mental model as uh, to how you choose to implement the wait versus? The, the wait and respond later? Yeah, the, the uh, if I want to do work in the interface. So, so if it's just like the user is going to see something and just give me some data, type in their name, fill out a form, whatever, th that's just a wait and come right back. But if I need to process something, maybe uh, you're describing uh, something and I want to do sentiment analysis on what you're describing or whatever, uh, then I don't want to come right back. Uh, I want to do that analysis and then come back. And so I, I choose a fast model right, on open router or whatever, and then that responds fast enough that it, it doesn't annoy the user. Something like that, yeah. All right. Okay, yeah. Well, thanks for Thanks.